guys, how's it going? So today we're gonna to be planting a bunch of gorgeous buddleias out in the South Garden. Butterfly bush is the common name. We have six different varieties and they all look so pretty right now. Look at this color. And it's a tiny bit early, but usually early to midsummer through the rest of the year is the butterfly bush's time to shine. I mean, they just keep throwing out colorful bloom after colorful bloom without needing much attention. They can take some abuse and they attract tons of pollinators. They're just amazing, amazing plants for a full sun spot in your garden. A few things that butterfly bushes share in common, no matter what variety you have, is that they do prefer full sun. That usually means a spot that gets six to eight hours minimum of sun. I think the more the better for these plants. In fact, once they're established, they are drought tolerant. They do like the heat and they perform the best when they get a ton of sun. They also need excellent drainage. They are prone to root rot, so you don't wanna plant them in a spot that's boggy, that holds onto too much moisture for too long. You don't wanna overwater them, all those things. If you have heavier soil like clay, you can still plant them, but just make sure to plant the root ball a little bit high. Um, and what that will do is help facilitate water drainage. You don't want water to settle into the crown of the plant, which is right where uh, the stem or the trunk comes out of the soil. You want water to run away from that Instead. So if you kind of create a little hill with your root ball so that water can run away, that's best. They all attract every single pollinator that your garden could possibly want to attract. They're amazing for that. So hummingbirds, butterflies, honeybees, and they do it for most of the season. They also provide color for a ton of the season and it depends on what variety. There are some that will start blooming earlier on and I think that kind of goes for every single category of plants out there. We have one variety today called Lo and Behold Blue Chip Junior that starts blooming really early, early summer, and then goes through a hard frost. But typical butterfly bushes start to bloom somewhere mid-summer and then they go through a hard frost. So they just bring a ton of of color through the dog days. Usually after we've cut back a lot of our other perennials, you know, I'm starting to cut back salvia and veronica, um, cut back that first flush of blooms, and then they sit there for a while looking just green and nice, but no color. That's where these butterfly bushes start to really shine. So they add color where your other plants really are lulling out for the hot part of the summer. Now, I don't know if this is true of all butterfly bushes, but the ones that I have planted in my garden are all zone five through nine, and there are probably hundreds of varieties out there. So definitely check the tag before you plant it. Typically though, wherever you're shopping in your local area, they're only bringing in varieties, hopefully bringing in varieties that are good for your local climate. The blooms are also fragrant. It's not an overwhelming fragrance. It's a very light, just pleasant smell, but it's very specific to butterfly bushes. You know, there are some varieties of plants when you smell them, it's Monarda for me. You smell that plant and it just takes you right back to your childhood or right back to a specific time in your life. Butterfly bushes are like that to me. And it definitely, when they're out in the sun, it's like that of most plants during the middle of the day when it's real sunny and warm, the fragrance is um, amplified a bit. And they do not have to be deadheaded now that could be different for non-sterile varieties. Here in Oregon, we cannot plant the non-sterile type. They have to be a sterile uh, seedless variety of butterfly bushes. So usually in plants that uh, will set seed, if you deadhead them, they typically are more productive in the bloom department. But for ours, it doesn't matter. They just keep on blooming throughout the whole season. So you can see like on this one specifically, this bloom is pretty much done. I mean, if you aesthetically wanted to go in and take that off so you don't see it, you can, but it's not going to affect this plant's ability to keep on blooming throughout the season. And that brings me to a couple of differences. So non-sterile versus sterile varieties. Uh, here in Oregon, and then I think in Washington, those might be the only two states where you cannot plant the non-sterile type of butterfly bush because they are termed invasive in our states, even though that's really just for the western side of the states where they have conditions that are conducive for the spread of butterfly bushes. We don't really have those conditions here on the eastern side where it's high desert. They wouldn't spread, but uh, we just kind of get lumped into the whole, you know, state's law, I guess. Uh, so it's kind of a shame because there are some beautiful varieties I would love to be able to plant here, like the Pugster varieties. They have huge, big, thick blooms. They're so pretty, but we can't plant them here. We can only do the sterile varieties, but there are a lot of those available. And then variety differences, of course, which will bring you different colors, different sizes, different growth habits. I'm planting uh, six varieties, like I said, but they are from three different series. So one of them's a micro series, so very short, very compact, like dwarf size. 
There's a Lo and Behold series, um, which are like kind of, they're a more compact, a little bit bigger than the micro series, but not as big as some of the others. And then we've got some from the Miss series, which are like four to five foot size. And then there's a ton of other ones, like huge, big, massive butterfly bushes that grow 10 to 12 feet tall, um, which I'm not planting today, but they're pretty as well. We're gonna go through all these specific varieties once we have them planted out in the garden. Now, ideal planting time for these is anywhere spring through mid-summer about, so we're about ready to lose our window. Uh, typically, you can keep planting as long as you keep them well watered. It's just a little bit more risk on the plant. Um, also, fall planting is a little bit more risky on these because they do tend to want a little bit more time to root in and establish before the winter. But if you find some on sale at the end of the season, I mean, I think it's worth the worth it because most of the time they'll make it through um, and better off in the ground than in their nursery containers anyway. So let's go get these in the ground in the sun. It's actually the hottest day of the year so far. It's supposed to be 104 today. So we'll get them in the ground, water them really super duper well, and then we will go through and talk about each of these varieties. they look amazing I did a few of them in like a mass grouping and it's gonna be so it already is striking even though they aren't full size so I'm gonna walk you through probably not in the exact order that we planted them I'll just start on this side of the garden and we'll end up on the other side not quite 104 yet I think we're hovering right around 100 but there's just enough of a breeze to where it feels doable out here and you guys were high desert so it's pretty dry heat so when i say it's over 100 it's not as bad as even those of you who are in less hot temperatures but more humidity we're going to start with miss violet which are right here and then go to pink microchip i wanted to give you an idea though of this whole space now we are smack in the middle of the afternoon it is full sun out here and very hot so it does always look kind of blown out like more bright on camera than it does in real life, but it is it is pretty bright out here. Now we do have quite a number of trees planted. There's a Katsura, there's cedars, juniper, maple, service berry, and other things. As those grow and put on size, we will definitely have to move some of these things out into more of a sunny location. But for now, and for probably several years, this will be a full sun garden all the way around. It'll just have there'll be a lot of sun which will be perfect for the butterfly bushes but i wanted to start back up just to give you an idea of the space you will see um plant cans back here which are for future projects so they're tucked back here because they're close to a hose and kind of out of the way but we've recently added in the fall in love sweetly anemones which have these beautiful kind of medium pink blooms and they're just butted up loaded 
and they are handling this 100 degree weather pretty good. Usually I plant anemones in a more protected location, so I am really quite impressed, especially because they're newly planted. That's incredible. We have the new, uh, is it mango something mango echinacea? We recently planted these in a video for you. And then betony, purple betony. There's a rose called State of Grace. I'll get close on that in a second. But the six butterfly bushes back here, I spaced them roughly four feet apart because this variety grows four to five feet tall and wide. Beautiful saturated purple blooms. There are honeybees. There's one right there. I can see activity around these shrubs. I think these are just glorious to have this big statement and then have that mango color. Those are opposites, right? On the color wheel, the blue and the orange kind of deal. Really pretty. Ginger wine nine bark here, which honestly looks like it could use a little drink. Yeah, I'm gonna get the hose out for that here in a second. And then State of Grace. Look at the coloring on this one. Isn't that a beauty? Oh. Totem pole panna come here. So yeah, a lot of beautiful things. Well, I had to come stand in the shade for a few minutes because my camera keeps overheating and turning off. Uh, but I was just gonna mention how most of the varieties that we planted today, well, all of them are really low maintenance in terms of pruning because butterfly bushes, they do bloom on new wood. Um, so you, if you want to prune them, the best time to do that is right after they start to leaf out in the spring, which they are one of the later ones to do that. So you do wanna be patient, let them have a chance to wake up. They will be slower than pretty much everything else in your garden. Um, but once they start to leaf out, it's really uh, an easy time to identify any weak or dead growth, take that out. And then you can prune each uh, branch down to the first set of really strong leaf buds. You might have a few sets above that really strong set, but they might be kind of weak or, you know, just not look as healthy. So you can cut it down to the healthiest, most robust looking set of leaf buds. And that usually just reinvigorates your plant. It keeps the plants more compact, usually more blooms lower uh, in the plant. Most of ours though, like the pink microchips, which we're gonna look at next, I probably won't do much pruning on them at all other than taking out any dead branches that they may have uh, because it's such a small compact plant. And I'm kind of gonna just treat it like a perennial, like the most low maintenance probably perennial I have in our garden. And even on like Miss Violet and Miss Ruby, you can go in and prune those. And I typically do. We've got a couple around our chicken coop that I like to prune back a little bit because it just produces a really nice fresh plant for you every season. And it also helps the plant, the plant have blooms a little bit further down in the canopy. Otherwise, like on the great big varieties of butterfly bush that will grow 10 to 12 feet or 15 feet or whatever tall, they turn into what's called second story plants if you don't prune them. Because they only bloom on new wood, if you never prune them, all the blooms will be at that very tippy top of the plant and you'll only be able to see those blooms from a second story window. So if you make it a habit of keeping them pruned back, it'll keep um, blooms more at eye level where you can actually enjoy them when you're in your garden. Unless it works with whatever design you have going in your garden because sometimes you have those types of shrubs planted at the very back of a border and you've got a bunch of stuff in front of them. Uh, so sometimes it doesn't matter if you have a lot of blooms lower in the plant because there's a lot blocking it but you want all the blooms at the very top. So it kind of just depends on what situation you're in where you have your butterfly bushes. Either way, uh, occasional pruning is always good for most plants. Okay, we're gonna venture back out, see how long our camera lasts. We're gonna look at these pink microchips right here, starting kind of back down the, the way here because I do wanna show you there's a Wichita blue juniper, there's some sedum. I planted eight in here and I drifted them just like I would a perennial because they only grow one and a half to two feet tall and wide, which is smaller than a lot of the perennials that I plant. So really the only maintenance I'm gonna to have to do on these is come in in the spring and cut out any dead. That's it. I mean, I don't even have to cut these back like we do with normal perennials. So they're essentially lower maintenance. Uh, and they'll start to bloom uh, usually about midsummer, and then they'll just continue to bloom. We can come out here and deadhead them, like I said earlier, if we want to, you know, we can pop off any spent blooms, but we don't have to if we don't want to. We can just let them do their thing. I do have some little Henry Iteas in the back there. Those grow about three feet, so I think we'll have a nice layering uh, thing going on here. Next, we've got Miss Rubies. I had just set the Miss Rubies out when a big swallowtail landed on one of them. It was the most beautiful thing and it made me feel like, yes, this was the right choice for the garden. So three of them here. We have one here kind of tucked in behind the yarrow. It gets full sun until late in the afternoon where the forest pansy kind of shades it a little bit. You can still see it's got quite a bit of sun on it. 
forest pansy kind of shades a little bit behind it really. Um, so that'll fill in this space here again four to five feet tall and wide on this one. This one's more pink than the purple like the Miss Violet. Uh, and then one here and one right here. We did save some space over here so we could plant a nice evergreen because we've got the forest pansy and evergreen would be beautiful. We do have to replace the Deodora, which is kind of a bummer, but I'm actually thinking we'll do three, three of the same kind of evergreen in here. Um, anyway, that's kind of the plan. I know that's kind of off topic. These have such beautiful big blooms, bright pink with kind of a yellowish white throat. So they kind of have a glow quality. I am just really excited about these. And I do think they look really pretty next to the yarrow. They'll be blooming at the same time. We've got some daylilies right here. It's just gonna be a beautiful, beautiful area that the pollinators will love. We're gonna have to mulch again here soon too. That will help with moisture and keeping things a little cooler as well. Next ones are right up here. This little trio is so cute. These are Lo and Behold Blue Chip Junior. So there is a Lo and Behold Blue Chip, but this one is an improved version. They grow about one and a half to two and a half feet tall and wide. So again, another more compact variety that's easy to tuck in at the edge of a border. Um, but this one has much bluer flowers and it blooms fairly early in the season, like early summer, instead of waiting the um, few weeks until midsummer to start its bloom season. Look at how beautiful. I cannot wait to see these things fill in. We've got a Desert Plains Penicetum right there. We've got the Firefly Peach Sky Yarrow there. There's a bottle brush and a nine bark. There's some hyssop and some geraniums. There's just a lot of pretty things out here right now. The next three we planted are called Purple Haze and they're a super interesting variety because they have a completely different growth habit. So they don't look like it now, but as they start to mature, they have a very horizontal growth habit. Their branches grow horizontally instead of upright in like more of a vase shape like normal butterfly bush. I love them. I think they're really beautiful. When I show these to you, it will give you a sneak peek of the flagstone pathway we are putting in. We will have a full video for you ab about that later, but we're working on it just in little bits of free time we have when it's cooler out because it's out here in the full sun. We started the project one day and just thought, there's no way we can get this done really quickly and there's no way we wanna work on it through the hot part of a summer day. So anyway, we're just gonna work on it a little bit at a time. So you'll probably see it over the next few weeks just getting bigger and longer and longer and yeah, hopefully done quickish. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I am just loving how it's turning out so far. You can see the two butterfly bushes right here, which they are not in bloom at the moment. This is the only variety we planted today that are not in bloom right now. Um, but I thought that they would look beautiful, kind of just like barely gracing the edge of the walkway. And with the type of branching habit that they have, I think they're gonna be perfect right here. But these stones, you guys, are so awesome. We have them mostly leveled, but we thought we would, see we've been bringing pieces out a little bit at a time and kind of just like a puzzle, really. We don't want it to be perfect. When we're all done, we will mulch over all of them and that will help fill in all the cracks, but I am just loving how it's turning out so far. And you can see it's gonna kind of take this direction. I don't know if you can see the white line still, but it's gonna go kind of around this way. It goes around this Corinthian linen around the backside of it and then it comes back out through that direction. And then we haven't decided 100%, it kind of depends on how many stones we have left once we get the main part of the pathway done, but we might spider off that direction. And then on this side, we'll spider off possibly this direction toward the berries. These stones are pretty much the same as the ones that we used inside the Hartley, except for these are more natural in shape um, and more irregular. The other ones were what they call snapped. Uh, which is kind of like being cut, but not. They, you know, they don't have super straight edges, but they have more of a uniform square or rectangular shape. Anyway, this is about the butterfly bush. So this is what it looks like right now. It's got kind of a sagey gray green, really pretty. Nearby, we have some serendipity alliums that are butted up and about ready to, it's gonna be gorgeous when they're in bloom. And then we've got a coral berry there. The arborvita that I tried to transplant last minute did not take. So I'm gonna put something else right there, probably an evergreen, like right here, like a small one. I think it would look really nice. And then on this side, I do have a Arctic yellow dogwood here. Um, I had to cut a lot of it out this last spring. So I'm hoping that it rebounds and fills in this space right here. I did leave enough space on both sides of the walkway to do a smaller growing perennial here. 
Last one is in this corner. So I'm trying really hard to make sure that this corner doesn't become no man's land. In fact, I put some annuals in the ground and some perennials over here. We've been adding some shrubs. You know, we've got a hibiscus right in here. There are a bunch of like irrigation box. There's an electric box. So we have to be kind of careful about what we put in this area. Uh, but I put three of the lo and behold ruby chips. So they're like the Miss Ruby, but they are smaller, very much so smaller in their growth habit and their stature. So while Miss Ruby grows four to five feet tall and wide, this one grows about 30 inches tall and wide. So much easier to tuck into the edge of a flower bed. This right here is going to be, the, well, it is the edge. Uh, we have our lane right here and we do drive on this a lot, you know, and I just want there to be pretty things all along the edge of all these beds. Uh, and then, you know, we'll fill in back behind with bigger things, but I want some good color out here. And you know what? They will love it right here. Full sun all day. Um, yeah perfect plant I think for this area. All right guys we are back in the shade and that's probably where I'm going to stay for the rest of the afternoon. I do have to go water the greenhouse for to that point of the year where you know the sides are up and we have fans going but I have to water usually twice a day not everything but I water everything in the morning and then have to go do touch-up watering late in the afternoon just to make sure it makes it through the hot part of the evening. So anyway I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm super excited to watch those grow and fill in and just really excited to have that color out there. Every little thing that we add out there just adds something special to the area and it's just an exciting thing to see kind of unfold. I'm loving it. So thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.